afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our webinar on Google Analytics, Making It Actionable. My name is Ann Olson, a principal of the firm, and as a self-proclaimed analytics enthusiast, I'm thrilled to have over 150 colleges that have signed up to join us in our webinar today on Google Analytics. We've spent the past 15 years as an organization actively engaging in the higher education market space. Personally, I started Converge Consulting, a digital marketing agency that's focused on recruitment marketing and alumni engagement two years ago. Our company is built around the fact that research should drive decision making and marketing activity. What worked five years ago has clearly changed. Technology has changed. We're here to ignite that conversation and lead the discussions that are important to colleges around the country. Converge works with colleges and universities across the country. We've worked with colleges from Columbia University on Google Analytics training to Rice University on segmentation projects. We are very, very excited to be partnered with iModules, in which we provide Google Analytics consulting training and web usability for their clients. I am pleased to introduce Becky Vardaman, who will be leading us through our discussion today. Becky has a passion for helping clients to answer questions using Google Analytics, website development, and all things digital. Becky has a very strong past in digital experience in managing marketing for a software firm and working in a Fortune 500 company, as well as the newsroom. Becky's webinars typically generate a lot of questions, so if you have any questions, be sure and type those in the question box, and we'll be happy to clarify anything. And we will be providing the audio recording as well as the slides after the presentation today. Uh, with that, I'll let Becky guide us through our time together. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for spending your hour with us today. So I know we just met, but I'm going to take you into a place some of only my best friends have seen, my basement. <laughs> so this is an actual picture of my basement. My husband and I, um, we do a lot of online shopping, probably similar to what you guys do. And it's created an interesting problem of a bunch of boxes piling up in our basement. I was reading a blog a couple weeks ago now, and it was talking about the way that chores are divided up at home. And, you know, a lot of people think it's, oh, well, who's home or, you know, traditional gender roles. This blogger argued that it's, it's really the chores get done by the person who cares the most. And this is totally true with our box situation in my basement. I could walk by those cardboard boxes 20 times a day, and I would not be breaking them down. But they're starting to sort of encroach on my husband's workbench area. So he has a lot at stake. So he typically is the one who breaks them down and takes them to the recycling bin, which is not a fun job. So what does that have to do with analytics? It's actually very similar to the way that people look at analytics within an institution. Basically, the person who does the reporting and manages it is the person who cares the most. And for me, that's great, because hopefully that means that I've got a bunch of people on the phone right now who care the absolute most about analytics in their institution. Um, but that also says that, by default, we're the ones that care the most, which means we have to make other people care more. We're, we need to evangelize angel, uh, analytics to them. And how do you do that? How do you make people care about all these reports and all these numbers that you have? You make it actionable. You tie it to something that people are really doing in their real lives, in their real marketing efforts. So to kind of frame our conversation today, I've invented Converge University. Now, Converge University is hopefully you'll see some similarities with yourself in them. That's the whole point. They are, you know, anywhere USA. They have adult programs. They have undergraduate programs. And apparently it's cold there. <laughs> so if we were going to sit down and talk to the marketing team at Converge University, um, the first thing I'd want to know is what are some of your tactics? What are you doing? And Converge University, they're doing SEO keyword optimization for both their program pages and their landing pages. They know that's important. Um, they're doing a lot of content marketing through things with blog writing. Um, maybe they're doing some videos and some uh, infographics, things that are really engaging. They're probably doing a lot of social media marketing because that market is uh, a lot of, of younger people, potential students, are out there in that social media. So they're out on Facebook, they're on Twitter, you know, they're out on LinkedIn, and they're doing a bunch of campaigns around that. 
They're also running some search engine marketing campaigns through AdWords. And they're also doing public relations type activities with press releases and guest blogging and trying to get their name out there. So what do they want people to do when they get to their website? When you get to convergeuniversity.edu, they want you to go and schedule a visit to, to, to meet them, to come visit campus. They want students to apply online. They want people to connect through an inquiry form. And they want people, their alumni, to really get engaged and also contribute financially or, or through their time. And they want, they want their website users to initiate a relationship with them, show that they're interested in getting to know them better by following them on Facebook, um, Twitter, or signing up for some of their emails. So once they get there, what questions do the marketing team at Converge University want answered? What are the things that help them make decisions? They want to know where their visitors are spending time on their site. They want to know how long their visitors are there. They want to know how deep they're going, how many pages they're going in, if they're just grazing the surface or if they're digging way in. Um, they want to know what they're doing. If there's any way we can tell, are they watching videos? Are they clicking on things? What are they doing? And they also want to know what content is actually working. You, you put a lot of time and, and money and effort and sweat equity into that content development. You really need to know what's working. So hopefully you notice that those last three slides play really well into our inbound marketing idea. Here at Converge, we really like to stress the idea of the attract, convert, delight um, funnel, if you will where you're getting those strangers out there that maybe have never heard of you, and you're attracting them to your website through all of these things here. Then you're taking them as visitors and converting them. You're saying, providing them with, you know, the right content, the right things that make them convert into students. And then those students, we also want them to be delighted by our content. We want them to, you know, spend a lot of time on our site, promote us to other people, um, really be the promoters for our institution. So keep this in mind as we're walking through some of, this, some of the reporting. Now, there are a few things that we need to kind of keep in mind to set the table before we even get into um, looking at the actual reporting. We want to make sure that things are set up right so that the reports are as valuable and actionable as possible. All right, get ready. We're about to get techie. <laughs> Here comes the analytics part. So the very first thing that I look at when I'm, when I'm dealing with a new client is I want to make sure that their code is up to date. Several years ago, um, there was a more traditional code, and they changed it to this asynchronous code. The reason you want to make sure that yours is up to date, sure, the old code still works, but the asynchronous actually loads from multiple different locations which makes it have less impact on your site. And because it has less impact on your site, you can place it higher up on your page, right before the end of the, the head tag where it closes. And that's good because it's above pretty much everything large on your site that might take a while to load. So you're going to have more accurate results. Um, if you've been around and your site's been around since the days of Urchin, you probably want to check this. I would check it either way. It's really easy to do. Just go out to your website. You can right click, view page source, and then I'll usually just do a control F and try to find that UA dash within my code because sometimes that code is a little bit stressful to <laughs> try to read all the way through. But basically you can see where it is and what, you, what your code is. It should look like the example I have here. But the X's are your account number. So the second thing that you always want to do is look at how your setup is. How is your account structure set up? Um, accounts in Google Analytics which start with the top level account, which basically is in, in most cases for us institution level, and then properties are the different sites within. So perhaps you have subdomains that you want to track, or maybe they're different domains altogether. Those can all be put in as different properties. The profiles are basically the, the little buckets underneath those properties, and you can make a bunch of those. And so your assets, your goals, your users, your filters are all in that profile level. So if you made two different sets of, or two profiles, one to exclude all your internal traffic and one to be a, a play place where you test, you'd have to set up different goals for those two different profiles. So definitely something to take a look at. Check that structure. Make sure that it makes sense. 
And then something that we see a ton in higher ed is this, this referral traffic problem. If you look at this example, if you're in your analytics and you go to traffic sources and you go down and dig down to referrals, you see that this example, the number one referring source, is my own website. So <laughs> convergeuniversity.edu is the number one thing that's referring traffic to my site. And I know that that can't be true because I am convergeuniversity.edu. If you see something like this, most likely you have a subdomain issue and you're not tracking right across different subdomains. And just for uh, clarification, subdomain is that um, anything before the dot that you would see here. So if it was apply.convergeuniversity.edu or even www.convergeuniversity.edu. If you have multiple versions um, out there of your website published, you'll end up seeing this. If you're tracking a bunch of subdomains in one place without the proper filters, you'll see this. So it's definitely something that you should look into. The reason it's such a big deal is that basically when you're referring traffic back and forth to yourself, you lose all the actual referral data. So there's about 2,500 people who were referred from my own website, and they might have been from Facebook. They might have been from another uh, campaign, but we'll never know. So you want to get that fixed. So a basic checklist that you can look at to make sure your setup is right. Code up to date, code's in the right place, make sure your account is structured properly. Also, those referrals, they should be clean. On to goals. <laughs> goals are really what give the power behind analytics. So what is a goal? A lot of people that we work with, the first thing I do is I'll, after I've made sure everything is in place, I'll go and see if they have any goals set up. And a lot of times it looks like this, <laughs> which means no goal set up. Um, per profile, you can have 20 goals, and they're in four different sets like this, sets of five. I like to group my goals. Um, you can look at them in the reporting by set. So I like to group them in things that make sense together. So maybe I have a bunch of goals around um, admissions for different forms that all are different types of admissions goals. I put those in a set together. So really, they're easier than you think. I think a lot of times people get a little bit stressed out about goals because I tell them it's the most important thing and they're like, oh no, what are we going to do? But really it's easy. You know, all you have to do is answer the question, why does my site exist? So for our example with Converge University, we asked them about it earlier, right? And they said they wanted to schedule visits, they want people to apply online, we want them to inquire, engage alumni, give, um, follow on social media, and sign up for email. So that's pretty simple. How do we translate those real life goals to Google Analytics? There are four different goal types. The first is a URL destination. This works really well for things like thank you pages, especially if it's unique to a specific form, um, or maybe just a specific type of content that you really want someone to look at. Visit duration and pages per visit are both really good for engagement. If you want to know how long people are visiting your site um, or how many pages they're visiting and you really are aiming for a certain amount there, it depends on what kind of content you have. If you were a blog and you wanted people to just read, 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 your goal might be around um, visit duration versus pages per visit because the content on one page is really engaging. And then also um, you can set a goal around events. And we'll talk in depth about events coming forward, so we'll follow up with that. So let's look at this as an example. If we were going to do a schedule a visit, Working on the assumption that scheduling a visit as a form with a thank you page, we would use a URL destination goal and put that goal URL in as the, anytime someone hits that URL, it'll trigger a goal. Apply online, we're going to assume the same thing. It's a form with a unique thank you page, so we'll use a URL. Inquire, same story. Um, the engage alumni. You could use a lot of different things for this to test this. You could say visit duration if you want um, your alumni to be on your site for a long time, or if you want them clicking around a lot on your site based on what kind of content you have, you could use pages per visit. Or if there's something specific you want them to do, like watch a video or follow you on Facebook, um, you could use an event as an alumni engagement. Um, giving, also, let's assume that that's a form. It's probably a financial secure form. 
So that'll have a, a unique thank you page. And um, follow, follow on social media. Again, we would use events for that. Events are great for um, tracking something, the intent of someone leaving your site. We'll talk more about that, though. And also sign up for email. Probably there's a thank you, thank you page for that. So really, it's not, it's not that tough. A couple other things to think about when you're looking at goals is if you look on this page, there's a goal value when you're setting it up. And this is a, an example of a goal URL. So let's say somebody applied, they got to your apply thank you page, triggers a goal, right? Well, we know that these are fake numbers, so bear with me, <laughs> that your institution is, what, $40,000 a year, right? And 50% of those people who fill out this apply form actually come to school and pay you that money. So just for simplified math, you can see that the goal value is about $20,000 for somebody filling out this form. This is a great way to actually tie real numbers to some of the things that maybe you wouldn't have been able to do before. And in addition to that, there are goal funnels. I'm sure you've heard of this a little bit, but it's really, really nice for um, forms that have multiple steps. So maybe you're applying and you don't want to give them the whole gamut of questions on the first page because it's a long application form. And you go from URL step one to URL step two. And all of these are required. This is great because then if you set your goal up this way, you can see where people drop off. So in your reporting, you can go back and look and see, well, it looks like there's something broken on step one because nobody makes it to step two. Or maybe step one is way too long and only 50% of the people make it to step two. So you can, you can optimize your pages based on these funnels. So here's your goals checklist. Answer, why does my site exist? Then translate those goals to Google Analytics and add your goal funnels and goal values whenever possible. Go number seven. <laughs> On to events. Events are um, relatively new in the world of analytics. They're four or five years old now, but in the big picture, they are Really, really cool. I hope that you guys um, will be as excited about them as I am. They're really a way to see deeper and closer into things on your site that you haven't traditionally been able to see. And they work really well if you have um, complicated code setup or um, things in your site that maybe the URL doesn't change on when you uh, click through a form or you're using Flash, heaven forbid. So what are they? Basically, a little snippet of code, and you can see it up there in green, and it has some parameters. So it's got these different facets that you can use to basically um, tag things that are going on in your site. So in this, the, the top level is category, so you can group objects by a category. You can group them also by an action. Um, I recommend using a label as well. Those top three are the ones that I use primarily. Uh, you can add value if you need it. If there's some kind of numerical data around something that you're trying to track for an event, you can. Or if you need to, to um, use the non-interaction, it affects the bounce rate. But primarily, the top three things are what you're going to want to look at. And let's walk through an example. So in this example, events are really, really good for things like video for um, complicated forms. They've got that submit button down there. Anytime that you're having somebody leave your page, you basically are breaking the analytics on them. If somebody leaves your page, we can tell that they leave and we can tell what page they leave from, but we can't usually tell where they're going. So events are really cool if you have something like follow up on Twitter or Facebook. If you event tag those, then you'll get the intent at least that, yeah, our website drove people to our Facebook page to like us or downloading forms, buttons like that. Um, a lot of times people will have PDFs or other documents out there that they don't have tagged correctly, so they aren't showing up in their analytics. And maybe they have really good content on them, but they just need to add a little bit of event tagging and then you can, you can see what's going on there. So Converge University on their beautiful homepage has this great video about why they should come to Converge U for fall um, 2013. So a couple of ways that you might want to tag this. Uh, the, the category in the first instance is let's call this a video. We want to look at all videos separately. And maybe we're really interested in 
how people are using this video. Are they watching it? Are they pausing it? Are they rewinding it? Are they fast forwarding? So in the action on this one, it's going to be watch. The label for this one will be the fall 2013 recruiting. So that'll give us a really good idea if we're interested in how the videos are working and if people are using them in the way we think that they are, that set of, of tags will work really well. But what if you're interested in everything that's going on in your homepage? So you could tag it as um, homepage for the category and maybe you have other things tagged on your, on your homepage as well like homepage follow on Twitter, homepage um, click through and download application, things like that. So in this one, the category will be homepage, the action will be watch video, and the label will still be the fall 2013 recruiting. As long as you have a plan and you're consistent with it, you can really use these in a lot of really cool ways. So that comes to the, the make a plan. Is you really do need to have a plan when you set out to do these so that you can be consistent and not end up with gobbledygook reports. <laughs> so, you want to look at, you can see it from event category, you can look at reporting by the action and by the label. This is an example here of what it looks like when you look at a report by the category. Um, this is all found in your content report. Keeping in mind when you're setting up events, you can use them to make goals. So if you, when you're figuring out how you want to set them up, and there's something on your site maybe that you want to set a goal around but you don't know how to, this is a really good way to kind of cheat the system and add an event to it. And again, you can set it based on, see how it has all the different facets there, you can base, base it on any of those. So anytime someone watches a video or anytime someone clicks on something from the homepage that we want them to. Another really cool thing you can do here with events is you can use them to create advanced segments. Advanced segments, I'll just touch on really briefly. They're really cool and you can do a lot with them. But for our conversation, I'm just going to do a quick overview. Basically what it is, is you can create your own custom and when you put an advanced segment over your reporting, all the reports that you're looking at will have to include someone who has, in this case, done that event. So if you're really curious in how people are interacting with the rest of your content after they've watched a video, you can, you can do that. So you can say, okay, I want to know who's watching this video and what other pages they've looked at. So you can kind of start to learn behaviors that way. So another thing to keep in mind when you're planning for events is you can get that level of, of detail from it. And when, when I say keep, keep track of the plan, I mean really simple. I usually just keep a spreadsheet for any website and what the events are and how I've got them organized so that um, this will happen, I promise. It'll be six months and you will need to go in and create some more events and you'll forget how you did it. <laughs> so it's so helpful to have this, this document someplace and shared with anyone who's creating events for your website. Or for that matter, anyone who's looking at events on your, in your analytics because they might need some sort of uh, translation for you. So your events checklist. Be sure you make a plan. Record that plan. Go ahead and execute it. You have to put that code onto the site and stay consistent. If anyone has any questions, be sure and type those in the question box. On to campaign tracking. Now campaign tracking, from talking to different clients, I think a lot of people have actually touched on this one and that's fantastic. We'll go over it. So what is it? You see that big long URL? You've probably seen those before, even if just as a consumer you've been clicking around and you see all these UTMs and their ampersands and underscores and it just looks like a big mess, right? Well, they're campaign tracking for Google Analytics and other, other tracking tools also use these kinds of parameters. So it, they have their own facets, so very similar to the events. When do you use them? Why would you use it? Just like events can give you information about intent when someone leaves your site, this can give you a lot of information about intent for people coming into your site. So if, if you're running things on Facebook or LinkedIn, YouTube, you can set up your RSS feeds to be automatically tagged, um, emails, any of these other social networks. It's a really good tool to um, really put some real numbers, really inexpensively, basically it's just your time, <laughs> um, 
and figure out what's performing. What's performing, what isn't? Where should we be putting our more of our effort, more of our money, more of our creative? Um, there was a question. How do you add code? Would this be something iModules would do? You know, for iModules people specifically, yes. The event tracking code needs to go through them. Um, anybody else, if you have access to the back end code of your site, you should be able to add it or someone in your web dev team should. That's another reason that that um, spreadsheet is really helpful because if you can deliver that to them in a way that is simple like that and have a little a column, you can add a column for checkboxes and then I always add an extra column when I go in and verify that they added it right, <laughs> that, that helps with that workflow. Um, there was another question, are these tools available in Google Analytics? Yeah, everything I'm showing you here is available in Google Analytics and it's all in the base, you know, standard, um, standard reporting. A lot of the time in the deck, when we'll send you this presentation afterwards. I've shown you on the left in a little crop up of where you can find it in your analytics if there's a specific tool you're curious about. Um, there was a question, how do we obtain the updated asynchronous code? Do we need to remove the old code completely that's at the bottom of every page? Yep, you can get that old code out. It should be the same user ID, so that little UA dash number should be the same. And you go back into your analytics and look under admin and there's a, a I don't have it in front of me, but it's one of the, there's one where you can get the tracking code and you, you have an option actually in there of grabbing which one you want. So make sure that asynchronous is checked and then just grab that and put it in your head tag, hopefully on your template. <laughs> there is one more question. Um, you guys are asking fabulous questions. Can you, how do you add event tracking code to embedded Vimeo videos? You know, I'm not sure on the, I'm sure that you can do it on embedded videos. It's great for all these things. Um, Vimeo, I haven't worked with directly. I know I've worked with YouTube, but um, if you want to shoot me an email afterwards, I can certainly dig into it a little bit deeper. My email is on this template, and also it's just Becky at convergeconsulting.org. So, okay, cool. And it looks like we have your name from the chat. So we can definitely follow up on this specific question. Yeah, these are great questions. Cool, you good? Yep. Back to campaign tracking. <laughs> So again, when you're doing campaign tracking, you want to make sure you're making a plan. And you see the campaign tracking in your, in your reports, see the left there with the traffic sources, sources, campaigns. And um, you can look at them by campaign, by source, or by medium. Those are the, the three main facets. Something that um, will kind of muddle up your reports if you aren't careful is you want to make sure that the source matches whatever existing sources you have in there. A lot of times if you're using an email client or, um, or some other program, some other uh, kind of website add-ons do this too, they will automatically um, create this, this UTM code for you and add it to the, your emails for you. And you can see in this example, the difference between the capital E and the lowercase e actually will break the reporting in this case. So you want to make sure it's consistent. And if you, so if you're sending out automated emails through something, just go in here and look and see how it's showing up and how it's, it's working. And then if you're manually tagging anything, make sure it matches. It's important to do with, um, with social media sources too, since they're actually a referral source. And again, record that plan. The best way to do this, typically we, the campaign tracking comes huge into play when you're doing social media. Um, so if you keep a social media campaign or content calendar rather, to you know, keep track of who's posting what to where when, which I definitely recommend if you're not doing. It's a great place to add this in. You can just add in the here's what we're also tagging this so that you can see that you're being consistent and uh, that anybody can do it on the fly if somebody's sick or something. So back to advanced segments. This is a really cool thing about um, these campaigns. So in this example, let's say that we posted a um, video, our fall 2013 campaign that we have for Converge University. We posted that to Facebook, right? But we also posted it to Twitter and we emailed it out to people. And on all of those UTM tags, we use the same campaign name as fall 2013 campaign. I can make an advanced segment around that specific campaign with that specific content 
and then overlay that on all of my reports. So basically everybody who came to my website with the intent of seeing this fall 2013 campaign video that we pushed out, what did they do? What did they look at? What goals did they convert on? All of these things to really measure the effectiveness of that campaign. So here's an example of exactly how this works. It is easier than you think, I promise. <laughs> so this is our example of Converge University posting a link to their fall 2013 recruiting video to Facebook. This is, these are again free tools. Um, if you go look for the Google Analytics link builder, just in Google, search for that, you can find it. Um, I like Raven's Google Analytics configuration tool because it's got not only this, but it also has configuration tools for um, events and also set up for kind of more complicated uh, subdomains and multi-domains. Definitely worth taking a look at. Um, again, you can just Google that, the, the Raven Google Analytics configuration tool. They have icky URLs, otherwise I'd put them up here for you. <laughs> so all you do is you put that URL of where you want people to come, your landing page on your website. Under campaign source, we're going to put Facebook because that is the, the source that people are coming from in this instance. Campaign medium, we're going to use social. You see some other examples there that they have. The CPC, if you're doing that kind of marketing, advertising. Um, if you're doing banner ads, or this is where you would put in, you know, email if it was from email. So again, be consistent. Um, skipping down to the other required field with the asterisk, is the fall 2013 campaign and again I, I could use this exact same code but change Facebook to Twitter and use it again for my Twitter and then I just put it as an example in here let's say we have three versions of the video you can tag it so that you have the different content so that you know which video is is driving more or maybe it's good for creative if you have ads on Facebook that show up in the feed which one of those versions of that uh, that graphic made people click through more. So you've got this big, long, awful link. What do you do with it now? You don't want to go post that to Twitter. It takes up half of your characters. Or you put it on Facebook and people are like, oh, they're tracking me. Typically what I'll do is I'll drop it into something like Hootsuite or Bitly, or I think Google has a shortener themselves, that basically it just drops it down to this little short URL. This is actually one of the main reasons that these short shorteners exist. <laughs> So your campaign tracking checklist. Make sure that you make a plan, record that plan, execute it using that nice uh, content template or content calendar, and also stay consistent so that your reporting will be consistent across the board in the back end. Any other questions? No? Yeah. Still going good? Cool. Let's get to the actual reporting. This stuff is really exciting to me. Can you tell? <laughs> so. Your dashboards are basically a bunch of reports around certain topic areas. You can see them up there on the left-hand side under dashboards in your, uh, under my stuff and dashboards. Any dashboard that you add or create, you can see you can actually add your own if you want, um, will show up in this area. The cool thing about these dashboards that I've created for you is they're out on our blog and you can download them. So the dashboards actually follow the same inbound marketing plan and answer those questions from those first three slides that we talked to Converge University about. So they attract, how are we doing at taking strangers, attracting them and turning them into visitors, convert, how are we doing at taking those visitors and converting them into students, converting on our goals, and students, how are we delighting them? How are they engaged with us? Are they becoming promoters? And even if you already have created dashboards, these would be great to look at as additional templates and samples to see if there's anything that you're missing or that you might want to include. And as Becky said, those are downloadable yep. on our website. Yep. In fact, anybody who's on the call right now, I've actually included a link to this specific blog post on our website. So you'll get an email after the call and have a, an easy way to go download them. Basically, you just click that download button and it'll let you choose a profile, which um, if you remember from, from earlier, the profile level is the dashboards are specific to a profile level. So if you have seven profiles built out on your analytics, you can add them to all seven, but you'll have to add them each. <laughs> and it's, it's really just as easy as that. There's a couple of customizations, but I'll let you know about those as we go through them. 
So I'm going to show you our dashboard. This first one is a track. Again, remember, strangers to visitors. So the first question that we want to answer is how are they getting here? Really the main question that we want to know, as long as you have your goals set up, is you want to know the visits and how many visits. Again, you can see that email, email problem in this. These guys don't. This Converge University, they don't, they don't have this set up right. <laughs> but it's a good illustration. Um, but what you're really interested in, though, is that conversion rate. So it's, it's nice to see that organic, they have a lot of traffic driven, but they also have a pretty good conversion rate. But it's interesting to look at whatever this LB was, um, which looks like it was custom tagged through a campaign, that it hasn't driven that many visits, but 30% of them convert on something. So something in that campaign is working pretty well. Which campaigns are performing? This is on the campaign level. So again, remember if we were just interested in our fall 2013 recruiting, this is where it would show up with all the other ones that you have running as well. So both the visits and the conversion rates. Um, which referral sites are driving the best traffic to you? If, if you don't have the, um, the referral issue fixed in your back end, you're going to see a little bit of yourself referring here. But basically what you're looking for here is who's sending us the most and how well are they converting. So it looks like these guys ran um, that kcrg.bimedia.net is an ad. So they're referring from that source and they're actually, of these things, they're converting pretty well on it. Um, what search terms brought users to us? You've gone out and we know that Converge University has done on-page SEO for their program pages and for their, um, for all of their landing pages that are important. So let's look at the keywords. Let's look and see what people are searching for and what's actually converting. How, are, are they clicking on those words that we want them to? Are they driving the right thing? Um, the not provided is sort of a point of a privacy point. When you're logged into Google as a user, let's say you're logged into Gmail or iGoogle or any other of the Google tools and you do a search in Google, Google won't record what keyword you're searching for and that's deliberate. It's a privacy issue because basically it would be giving us not just the search terms as marketers, but it would be giving a whole bunch of information about that person through their Google profile. So if you see not provided, it just means they were logged in. Um, where are they entering our site? This is really important if you're doing a lot of uh, landing pages, which hopefully you are, and trying to drive some people to them. So it looks like we're still seeing a lot of people on this one coming in through the index, the main page, um, and then again, the conversion rate for them. So maybe it's a landing page that is we're doing some advertising to that is directly about applying, and you would expect to see a high conversion rate on that. Although we're also seeing a lot of people coming in um, and the trend growing of, of visitors coming in not through that main index page, which is something to keep in mind. On to convert. Again, this one is about visitors converting to students, which basically students were using here as they did what you want them to do. <laughs> so I've had this, this one, there's only one report in here, but the, the idea is that you set this up for every goal that you have. Hopefully you've got a handful of goals in mind now. And what you want to see here is the landing page, where people came into your site, what the goal completions were, how many of each type of goal were, were um, completed. And then also what's that conversion rate for the page so that you can really tell like how well those landing pages are doing on your goals. Because really when it comes down to it, this, there's a whole dashboard just for this. Because, like I said, goals really drive a lot of your decision making and analytics. And now on to the engagement report. This is all about how your, your students and your, your existing relationship people are really being delighted by your content, engaging with your content, so that they get to the point where they want to promote you, which is always the goal. <laughs> so what site content is the most popular? To show you the pages, the page views, and then that average time. So on this instance, you can tell that their people are spending a lot of time on this uh, resources page. This is kind of a double-edged sword, and I like to use the example. Um, I have a friend who runs a 
website for a restaurant chain locally. And the only thing that's on their website, there's no menu, there's no way to order, there's nothing on there. The only thing that's there is location information so that you can go to the store and buy their food. They're a weird case because you really don't want people to spend a lot of time on your site if you're them. So you have to make sure you're thinking about it and trying to look at those numbers and understanding. Because if people are spending a lot of time on this restaurant's website, it means that their content's not very effective and people aren't, doing a bit, aren't able to find what they're looking for, basically. But in a lot of our websites, um, most of the time, a higher number is better because it means people are reading, people are looking around, people are hopefully interacting. What are they doing? This is a, where you'll be able to look at all of your events. Hopefully, you've got some ideas of what you want to event tag at this point. And you can look at, um, basically, are people watching your videos? Are they downloading your forms? All of those things that the, you couldn't normally track. They might be on one page, and, but you don't know exactly what they're doing. We also want to look at how deep people are going into your website. We want to see those unique visitors, how many pages are they hitting? A lot of people, most sites will probably have this sort of a report where most people are hitting one page, but on, the goal is to get more and more people down in that four or five or six range, as well as how often do they visit. On conversionuniversity.edu, <laughs> it looks like there are um, a lot of people who are only one-time visitors. And that's okay, but we want to make sure that we're trying to grow more people down towards that bottom, people who come back and, and visit over and over again. So it looks like we're going to have a little bit of time for questions, which is great. But I wanted to give you some key takeaways to look at here. We want to make sure that we have the proper code and setup, right? So everything has to be good and in place. We want to make sure that you have goals. Goals are super important. Um, we want to make sure that you have everything event tagged that you can, as well as that you're using campaign tracking and that everybody in your, um, hopefully as many people, as many teams as you can in your institution are using similar campaign tracking. And then you'll want to go and download these dashboards. We have all kinds of additional resources for you. Um, out on convergeconsulting.org, which is our actual website, not <laughs> convergeuniversity.edu. Um, come visit us at convergeconsulting.org, and we have presentations, we have webinars like this one, we have workshops, we have thought leadership, and um, we also have our blog out there. The third one down is actually the one where you can get the dashboards in, and we talk a little bit more about analytics. Um, some of my favorite people that really get me fired up about um, analytics in general is um, Avinash. His blog is fantastic. Justin Controni is also really great. And Google Analytics actually has a really good online um, help site. So if you run into any questions, there are just tons of people out there that are in forums, and there's lots and lots of directory help type help to help you through things. Well, I've got you here. I did want to mention that we are doing an SEO webinar very similar to this one next month, May 15th. It is also free from 1 to 2 Central Standard Time on a Wednesday. We're going to talk about all of the things out there, the way that search engines see your site, and how you can rank better in them. There was a question from Jeffrey asking, did we... Did you say we can get a copy of this presentation? This presentation, along with the audio recording, will actually be emailed out to all of you. Um, and we will automatically send that out to you upon completion of the, the webinar. So it will probably be later this afternoon, if not early tomorrow. Yep, and again, in that email, there is a link to um, download those dashboards, too. And there's also going to be a link to our uh, LinkedIn higher ed analytics group, please get out there and talk to us. Like, if you have questions, that's a great place to ask it. Um, join us there. We can answer them for you, and hopefully other people will have the same question, and you'll be helping them, too.